Are you called to preach? That's a great question, and we want to answer it for you right here. Hi, I'm Rob Nieves with Skilled Pastor, where we offer practical advice for better ministry. So let's get right to it. The question, are you called to preach? Am I called to preach? That's a question that many people ask. Uh, they they have a sense uh, that they like it, that they like the ministry, or maybe they say, man, you know, is God really calling me for this? Because I, I kind of feel uh, drawn towards that. Today, I want to answer that question for you and really help you because that's a big question and one that you should certainly ask and think through. But I do believe that there's a lot of noise around this question. Uh, when you ask this question to a lot of people, to many people, they'll uh, say things like, you know, well, what are you feeling? What are you feeling? And it's funny to me because even some trusted sources, uh, sources that are typically very big on biblical accuracy and making sure that it's in the word. Even those sources will often say, well, it's a feeling. It's, it's something on the inside. And here's the problem with the word call, because when we hear the word call, we uh, associate it with some sort of audible signal like like god did you call me did i hear you call me um or, or we think it's some miraculous sign so when someone says i was called to the ministry we think wow did god really speak to them or did god like show them some crazy sign in the skies you know or just some miraculous action on god's behalf or or did a prophet come by and prophesy you will be called and listen, some people do say that those things have happened to them. And uh, I can't say whether they have or they haven't. Only they can say that. So I kind of have to go by what they say. But I do know what the Bible says. In scripture, you'll find that people that actually heard the voice of God or that actually saw some sort of miraculous uh, sign, they are a few people actually, not a whole lot. And we do know that many people were called in scripture, but not everyone uh, says that they had this miraculous call. And, and typically they're the big names, you know, like Abraham or Moses or, you know, Jeremiah or, or you say, um, you know, Paul in the New Testament. Those are some of the big names in scripture that actually had some sort of a call that that it was obvious. It was very, very obvious for most people in scripture that were called. That wasn't necessarily the case. And uh, I'll, I'll point a few for you so that you see what I'm talking about. Nehemiah, for example was one that God called, obviously, right, to do a great work for him. But never in the book of Nehemiah does it say that God called him. Go go search it up. It never says that God called him. But rather, he had a heart for his people. He had a heart uh, to do something for the Lord. He was motivated uh, inwardly to do something. And that's what we describe as the call, typically. It's it's an inward motivation, something that God calls you to. Uh, you could even and think of Esther, for example, or even if you go to the New Testament, Matthias, right? Remember that Matthias replaced Judas uh, among the apostles? So you look at Matthias. Now, you might say, well, yeah, but they, they did cast lots and they fell upon Matthias. Well, you're right. You're right. That's what the Bible tells us. But is that prescriptive or descriptive? Does that mean that that's the way we select leaders now and that's the way we know if people are called? We just cast lots? Is that something we're always supposed to do? Obviously not. That's not what we do. What do we do? Well, we we look at the individual, right? And and, and we, we see, but Matthias, again, the lots just fell on him. Uh, it turns out that Joseph was probably uh, just as qualified, right? He had also accompanied Jesus and been around Jesus, just like Matthias had been. He had been a witness to the resurrection, just like Matthias had been. And man, who knows? The lots could have just fallen on um on Joseph rather than Matthias. I don't know, was it just chance and the apostles just went with that? Possibly. Maybe it's just descriptive of what happened and why they did what they did. So here, here's what, what I'm really getting at. I don't want you to feel like any less than because you haven't heard the voice of God or because you haven't, uh, and when I say heard, I mean like 
audible voice of God, or, or you haven't gotten some miraculous sign, it is possible that God has called you even though you haven't gotten that. By the way, it's funny to me because there's a famous preacher, I'll keep him nameless and uh, I'll, I'll try to be as subtle as I can, but uh, I watched a YouTube video where someone asked him, how do you know you're called? And in that YouTube video, he says that he never got a miraculous sign, that he never heard the audible voice of God, and I can see that. But it's funny, he was preaching on Jonas, and he actually, in that message, towards the end of the message, he tells us about his call. Now, that message was preached many, many years before this other time. In that message, he says that God called him by an experience. Uh, and and now he is saying, well, no, uh, never heard the audible voice of God. What I'm getting at here is really that, you know, even some of the greatest preachers, speakers, even some of the people that you trust uh, biblically, I want you to know that many of them have not heard an audible voice of God. So you shouldn't feel like any less than because you haven't heard the audible voice of God or you haven't seen a sign. Okay, so just uh, know that. So the call, uh, when people talk about a call, they're not talking about an audible or miraculous sign. What they're referring to, it's an impression in their heart. It's something which is a lot like maybe the impression in the heart in your heart that you're having right now in fact the fact that you're watching this video and you're still here might say something to me and might say something to you nevertheless uh you need to really check that right uh further first timothy chapter 3 paul writes and he says if anyone aspires the office of the overseer he desires a noble task and he doesn't qualify it he doesn't say you have to hear from god make sure you hear from god before you dive in he doesn't say any of that he just goes on and lists the qualifications and he says well they must be above reproach the husband of one wife sober-minded self-controlled respectable hospitable able to teach not a drunkard not violent but gentle not quarrelsome not a lover of money he must manage his his own household well with all dignity keeping his children sub Submissive, for if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he may become puffed up with conceit and fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must be well thought of by by outsiders so that he may not fall into disgrace into a snare of the devil uh so he goes over the qualification he just says hey these are the qualifications um you know do you sure you still want to do this <laughs> and i say that because you know when you read that you're like oh man like whoo like who who meets all those qualifications and you know what uh, honestly perfectly no one no one no one god has to deal with broken vessels he has to deal with people that are absolutely broken all of us are broken your favorite preacher your your best teacher is a broken vessel before the lord uh so don't think that you're any less than uh trust me if you uh aspire to be an overseer you aspire to be a pastor you aspire to be a preacher um you you just you're, you're desiring a noble task and one thing i might add to that is you know look around you and ask yourself well who else is aspiring to this now if you're in a seminary obviously a lot of people but who in your town is aspiring to this you'll notice that very few people are actually inclined many few people are even watching videos like these so the fact that you are to me says something and you should press into that i i believe now this doesn't mean you're not going to execute wisdom this doesn't mean that you're not gonna be wise about this. You do need to be wise. And I think there's some questions that you need to ask yourself. One, uh, very first one I, I think is, do you enjoy preaching and teaching? Can you do it? Do you know how to do it? Are you willing to put in the time to learn how to do it? This is an art, but it's something that needs to be learned. Like you need to learn how to do this. You need to learn how to put a sermon together so that it makes sense to people. Right. And do you enjoy that process? Some people don't. 
Uh, in fact, I happen to know a pastor that actually doesn't like to preach, which is a weird thing to me, but uh, that's got to be uh, top and, and foremost. Do you enjoy preaching? teaching? Uh, do you get too nervous in front of people? And it's okay if you do at first, obviously we all do, but, uh, you know, do, is this something that, that you say, man, you know, I can, I can see myself doing this. Second question I, I would ask is, are you good with people? Like, do you love people? And, and I get it. We're all supposed to love people, but let's be honest. Some of us really are energized by people while others of us are like, Ooh, keep those people away from me. Right. And, and there's times for both, right? Even Jesus had times where he was like, I need to go and get away from the crowds. But but the, the, the question here is, do you enjoy people? Do you love people like that, right? Do you care about people? And uh, right added to that is, do you find that people follow you? Do people come alongside of you and say, you know what? I believe in what you're doing. I believe in what you're preaching, what you're teaching, and, and I can get alongside of you. I'm not talking, do you have thousands? I'm just saying, do you even have a few people that would listen to you and would, would come along, right? And then I would also ask is, how do you do with criticism? How do you deal with that? Uh, are you good with criticism? Because if you are going to be in the public eye, you are going to have some criticism. Trust me on that one. Can you deal with it? Or are you too, you know, I don't want to say soft, but are, are you too sensitive that, man, it's just going to it's just going to mess you up if you get too much critique. Are you a forgiving person? Are you the type of person that can love people even though they've mistreated you, even though they did things against you? Or are you so hung up on yourself? So these are questions that you need to ask yourself. And one question that I think stands above all of those also is, what do the people who love you most say? What do they say? Uh, what does your spouse say if you're married? What do your children say if you have children? Uh, and by the way, like if you have a family, like you have to think, you know, is this right for my family as well? Because they're coming along for the ride as well. Uh, so my family, what, what do my friends say? Do my friends think I can preach? Not, not my friends that tell me what I want to hear, but you know, the real honest ones, like, do they, do they tell me that this, and if I preach or if I teach, what do people say? How do people respond? Are, are they just saying nice things or do you feel like somebody really got something out of it? Uh, have you had the experience where someone comes back to you? many, many weeks later, months, maybe even years later and says, Hey, I remember when you preached and you said this, and that really tugged on my heart. Th those are signs. Those are signs that maybe there's something there. And here's what I'm going to ask you to do that maybe others seem to make you shy away from. I'm going to ask you to press in. If you are feeling like, like, man, this is maybe something that God is calling me to do. I'm going to ask you, don't shy away from it too quickly, but press in because I'd hate for you to shy away too quickly when maybe God is steering you in that direction. And added to that, you know, I've told our church in the past, maybe someone else could pastor better than me, or maybe someone else can preach better than me. But guess what? At the end of the day, I'm the one who's here. Maybe there's someone else that can do it better than I can do it. But guess what? They're not, they're not going after God's call. So sometimes God has to deal with the ones or work with the ones that weren't invited initially to the banquet. And I believe there's a parable about that, that maybe if I used out of context, maybe it would work in the situation. But again, maybe you're not the best at it but are you willing to do it, right? Uh, I, I heard about a missionary that went to Africa and they asked him, hey, how do you know God called you? He goes, oh no, God didn't call me. <laughs> He's, and they're like, what? But you're a missionary, right? Like you've given up everything. He goes, yeah, but yeah, uh, God didn't call me. I volunteered. And I believe there's space for that too, right? Uh, again, 1 Timothy 3.1, he says, if you aspire the office of overseer, you're desiring a noble task. So I'm going to say, press in, ask some people what they think about what God is speaking to you and, and be careful with the people that you select there. Make sure there's some trusted people. Ask your family, ask your spouse, people that are really gonna be honest with you and say, hey, do you feel like this is something I should and could do? 
and they'll give you an answer. And uh, of course, prayerfully, you consider this and you bring it before the Lord as well. Well, I want to help you here. Before you go, I want to give you two free resources that I've got for you. The first one is um, a sermon preparation guide. Now, that's going to go really great with this uh, video that I'm going to share right here. I'm either going to put it here. I'm not really sure where I'm going to put it, but it's going to be somewhere on your screen. So after this video is over, go ahead and watch that video. It's it's just how to prepare for the first time you're preaching. So watch that video. But in the description box below, I'm going to share two links with you. One link is a sermon preparation guide that's going to go great with that video as a resource. And the second one is 12 tips, my 12 tips for more engaging sermons. I hope that that blesses you and that helps you. And if you have found this absolutely helpful to you, would you do me a favor? And this is just good for YouTube to know that you liked this content. That way they can push it out to your friends that might also like this content. So go ahead and just click on the like button there. That would be very appreciated. And also subscribe to this channel for more helpful advice. But until then, Keep up the great work.